Uh, hi guys. Uh, good evening, everyone. So, like uh, like my friend uh, uh, explained, there was a bit of a situation back home. So, um, most of our team couldn't travel. Uh, we were just three people who managed to get here, and we flew on Saturday. So, it's unfortunate that our team can't be here, especially we being a platinum sponsor. But the show must go on. So, we've got Sanjeeva here coming on video. There you go. Um, so he's going to talk about uh, API lifecycle with uh, open source tools. Um, so dub if you haven't heard about WSO2, um, we are a 100% uh, open source uh, uh, integration platform. We are right now the number one open source integration platform out there. Apart from API management, we also work across uh, identity and access management uh, integration, which houses our ESB, uh, as well as um, stream processing. Right. So API management is a very like a focused product for us. We've been getting a lot of traction to this area, um, especially after uh, leading re uh, analysts identifying uh, WSO2 as a leading uh, API management product in the uh, open source space, uh, especially um, with uh, reports uh, by Forrester and, and Gartner, and we have been recognized as a leader in the, uh, in the space. So um, that's it from me, so Sanjeeva is ready. Uh, even though we have a very small team here today uh, because of what's happening back home, uh, we have a couple of them there. So if you have any questions, uh, anything technical, we can uh, direct it to Sanjeeva. If you want to understand, if you are working on any projects, and if you want to understand how <coughs> WSO2 can help you with that, we have a couple of uh, more folks in, in the room. We have Travina and Shernan up there. Um, Shernan is uh, from Noviji, uh, who is one of, uh, which is one of WSO2 partners. And, uh, Travina is from the WSO2 account management team. We also have Nitesh here from Aspire Systems, uh, which is also uh, a WSO2 partner. And I think Jagat is also in-house. There you go, Jagat um, is uh, from another partner. Uh, he's technical, so if you have any technical questions, you can clarify with that with him. Okay, so Sanjeev, are you ready? Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so uh, first, uh, let me apologize uh, for not being able to physically present uh, today at API days. So uh, as some of you may already know, uh, in Sri Lanka, we had uh, some sort of a terrorist attack. And uh, with that, uh, so there are like uh, 300 people all dead and 600 plus people uh, in the hospital. Life, hospital. So uh, with all these conditions, uh, uh, some of us uh, were not be able to uh, attend the event physically. So uh, then uh, we decided to do uh, this uh, session uh, uh, through uh, online. So uh, so uh, so please bear if there are any technical difficulties associated with this particular talk. But uh, uh, during the session or after the session, if you have any questions or anything like that, so please contact uh, Subanki or Vishwa who was uh, who are sitting uh, with you. So they will uh, get back us and uh, I can uh, answer any questions as required. So uh, today the talk I'm uh, my session is mainly about uh, managing API lifecycle with uh, open source technologies. So my name is uh, Sanjay Malagode. Uh, I am uh, open source enthusiast. So. Uh, I work as Associate Director of Engineering and also as a PMC member and member of WSO2 API Manager team. And also I uh, contribute some open source projects including the Open API Code Generator and uh, different Apache projects. Okay, so start with uh, today's session. Uh, first, uh, we will see uh, what are the open source softwares and uh, uh, how open source softwares evolved uh, within the last uh, few decades. So if we start with the uh, 1950s, then uh, first computers were developed and uh, adapted. Then uh, by 1960s, there were universities, uh, they were doing different kind of researches and uh, they were developing certain software components. And at that time, mainly between the universities, they share their code and uh, they work collaboratively. But uh, at that time, there were no like something called, uh, no, uh, something called uh, open source software or something like that. But after some time, uh, 1970, then the operating systems and the, uh, some uh, limited uh, software is available. So early 1980s, uh, open source uh, software development led by the programmers in the small scale. So in the 90s, the 
uh, OS is pushed up by the uh, uh, development of the Linux and the open source uh, uh, other operating systems. So by uh, 1998, uh, open source initiative uh, started. So with that, uh, there were different license and uh, other protocols and uh, uh, other uh, terms related to open source software development uh, became much more popular. So, uh, so as we see uh, from uh, 1998 uh, to up to now, uh, this uh, this is uh, growing uh, very fastly. So, early days uh, there were different challenges associated with open source software development. So now uh, we have much more freedom, and uh, we have uh, very effective tools and other components that we need to uh, develop and manage open source software. So if we take uh, early stages, uh, these are some of the challenges that we had at that time. So uh, there were some resistance from the patents, fees, and uh, bundled solutions. So most of the time, uh, uh, when someone develops software at that time, they were patenting them, and uh, there were different fees associated. Uh, no, nobody wants to expose their software freely. And uh, there were some uh, solutions which are bundled together with the hardware. So in that case, uh, no one get chance to you know develop uh, software separately. So most of the time, they were bundled solutions. So and uh, one problem uh, had in the early days is uh, uh, how to get paid. I mean, uh, while you are doing open source software development, how do you get the pay? How do you get paid? Another problem is uh, how do you govern and control different projects? So uh, unlike these days, uh, there were no different source control tools and uh, so many people, uh, many different people across the world uh, cannot communicate like we do now. So there were problems associated with that as uh, said. And also early days, uh, most of the time, uh, proprietary software uh, and the closed source software uh, dominated world, uh, mainly because uh, we didn't have uh, proper business models around the open source. So uh, over the I mean, if we take uh, some time after uh, 1998, so there are different uh, tools introduced. So like uh, GitHub, Maven, Slack, Google Group, Stack Overflow. Uh, likewise, there are different tools uh, introduced. So with those tools, uh, it was much more easier to do the open source software development and uh, developers uh, were able to collaborate with each other easily and communication uh, communication and uh, discussion around uh, other, other team members uh, was much more easier with these new tools. So that mainly helped to uh, develop. And also, uh, in addition to that, uh, there were different business models introduced. So uh, providing uh, production and development support for the open source software. And also, uh, there were some uh, uh, opportunities created for the compa component development, and also there are different opportunities for the consulting services, partnerships, and open source deployment services, and things like that. So with all these things, uh, uh, there was a complete new uh, ecosystem around open source software development created, and uh, that uh, mainly goes to uh, grow the open source software uh, very fast uh, than it was before. So if we take uh, open source software today, then uh, uh, these are some of the statistics that I uh, pulled out from uh, Tidelift Prof uh, Professional Open Source Survey and the Black Duck Survey. So uh, if we take uh, uh, operating systems, then 65% uh, of them are run with the Linux and uh, nearly 80% of the companies run uh, part of all of their operations on top of open source. And recently, one uh, in 2018, one survey found that 92% of the applications contain at least uh, one open source library. Uh, in addition to that, 65% uh, of the companies leverage open source software to speed up their application development. And also, 67% uh, of the companies encourage their developers to actively contribute to open source software. So these are some of the stats. And uh, uh, open source software continued to grow, and uh, 
uh, now they are using for the mission critical applications, consume facing applications, and other stuff. So recently, uh, Forrester report says uh, 41 percent uh, 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 increasing C open source uh, movement uh, has their higher critical priority. So that means uh, most of the companies are moving towards the uh, open source software. And uh, there are some mature open source projects uh, which are challenging uh, traditional proprietary solutions because with the development power and the industry collaboration, open source softwares have much more power than the closed source software. So uh, to prove uh, about uh, the facts that we discussed so far, uh, we can point out uh, some of the big moves from the industry giants. So, uh, so if we take uh, uh, IT industry, uh, then uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Netflix, Microsoft, all of these people are moving towards the open source software. So for example, if you take uh, Google, then uh, Kubernetes, TensorFlow, they are contributing. So Facebook uh, contributing to many different open source software. So recently Microsoft open, uh, uh, open sourcing their patents and uh, VS Code project introduced. So likewise, uh, all the industry giants are also moving towards the open source software. So with that, uh, uh, all, the other, uh, all the other vendors and all the other followers uh, will also encourage to use open source softwares. So if we take open source software contributions uh, from the world leading software companies, these are some of the stats for the 2018. So as you can see, uh, top four positions uh, uh, hold by the uh, world leading uh, uh, software companies. So that means they are contributing much more to open source softwares. So, the, so if we take uh, one particular example, I will take this. Um, I will take Microsoft as example. So, uh, from the 2014 to 2018, you can see how they uh, uh, increase their contributions, and uh, you can see uh, by 2017 uh, they they have done a lot of contributions, and that is uh, keep growing. So, with this uh, what we can think is like uh, industry giants are also uh, moving towards this thing. So if we take uh, 2014, then uh, they say they love Linux, then uh, they uh, yes, then they release VS Code. Uh, then after that, uh, there are different components adding on top of uh, this uh, open source contributions. So uh, why people use the open source softwares? So there are different advantages associated with open source software. So first, I will discuss them generally. Then I will, uh, in the last part of my talk, I will discuss specifically how these uh, advantages are related to API manager management and uh, how those are related with API management. So obviously, uh, rapid adaption uh, to new technologies and um, go-to-market time, uh, limited resource uh, that are available in the open source community, by the thinking and by the intellectual input uh, that are coming from the community, other key feature, uh, key uh, advantages that we have with the uh, open source and also open standards uh, that are uh, that are enable to easy integrations with the other system so usually open source software develop on top of open standards so with that it's very easy to you know communicate with the other systems as well and also uh, it provides better security and uh, and it allows you to know what's real inside that so later I will discuss in detail how this uh, security uh, related to uh, open source software. And also uh, uh, with the open source software, we will uh, have access to world best software engineers, no bound any proprietary cost is another advantage, obviously. So uh, next question, so uh, open source software are cheap or not? So well, uh, so what I believe personally is uh, open source software does not have to be cheap because uh, with the open source software, you will get uh, many different advantages. Like, uh, so if you are using open source software, uh, it uh, comes with the uh, pre-security scan and uh, there are different uh, extensions, uh, documents freely available, some of the developed component freely available. You will get the great extensibility. So considering all these stuff, 
uh, it will be like uh, much it, it will add much more value to your organization than the proprietary uh, software so uh, so the, the, with the, considering all these uh, facts uh, we don't believe that need to be cheap software is uh, well, of course free but uh, you can spend your budget to you know uh, build expertise around these softwares and uh, invest some time on the r&d likewise so you can spend some money smartly and uh, help in this so if we take uh, digital transformation and uh, api management so these are uh, very popular topics and that is why we all are here at api days conference uh, because uh, each and every company these days moving towards the digitally powered company so all the companies uh, moving towards the digitally driven uh, organization and also uh, uh, recently gartner said that uh, uh, moving towards the digitally driven business is the one of the key objective of the uh, each and every uh, organization these days and uh, digital transformation means uh, integrating with the digital technology into all possible areas of the business and uh, it's a never ending process uh, once you started you have to keep continuing with that thing. so uh, it's mandatory to you know move away with the legacy platforms and uh, uh, introduce the new technologies and disruptive technologies so with all these priorities and all these requirements uh, digital transformation become uh, much more valuable than it was before and uh, when we uh, move in towards the digitally driven business uh, apis are very critical because at some point of your at some point your organization might need to expose your data to outside in a secure and controlled manner sometimes you may need to communicate uh, consume others data so it's more about the connectivity so when you connect with the external parties external systems and um, uh, external uh, uh, partners vendors other people you will have to communicate with them so in order to communicate with them you need to have uh, access some kind of api so when you expose your data to outside then again you will need api so api is a very critical uh, part in the uh, digital transformation for any industry any organization so now let's see uh, uh, so we know i mean uh, advantages of having uh, api management solution within your organization now let's see how uh, what are the open source api management solutions available uh, today market so these are some of the leading uh, open source api management solutions available uh, today market so uh, if i name them um, uh, api umbrella wso2 gravity type uh, community version saga and open api fusio api man so these are some of the Uh, open source api solutions available today market but uh, I, uh, these are not the all the uh, software as available as open source these are some of the selected one but there are a lot of other uh, open source api management solutions available out there so uh, if we consider these solutions uh, some of them have open source gateway while other components are remain proprietary Uh, some of these softwares uh, uh, comes with the complete API lifecycle management, including all the components. So that means all the components are open source. Uh, some of these solutions have a community version, which is open source, but they are maintaining closed source version for the commercially support version. So uh, when you select a proper API management tool uh, for your usage, you have to carefully evaluate. Uh, all the api management solutions out there so then only you will see uh, what are what what components are open source uh, is the entire solution is open source uh, what kind of licenses are available so all this information you have to evaluate very carefully because uh, so even uh, some advertise uh, this these solutions are open source uh, when you really going to use it only part of that is open source so it's very important to have uh, complete open source api management solution uh, in your organization to use its full power otherwise at some point you will get stuck okay so uh, now let's see uh, why we need uh, uh, 
uh, open source API management solution. So digital transformation is a collective effort, like we discussed early. So, uh, so when you want to uh, develop something and uh, something effectively, you need uh, others' contribution. And also, when you develop something with the closed source software, uh, then um, you are not fully aware of the current market trends and uh, what's going to happen in the industry and things like that. So, and uh, open source community power. Uh, provide the great insight and uh, it helps you to uh, you know uh, grow very fast and also if we consider the linux law it says basically it basically says uh, when you have enough eyeballs uh, all bugs will shallow so that means uh, so when when more people work on the open source project and uh, open source solution then uh, uh, there's uh, very less chance to uh, remain the bug so because more people uh, see this more people test this so with this thing um, you know, bugs will uh, more bugs will find and they will be fixed and um, this open source approach is uh, very effective than the traditional qa process and uh, with that uh, open source software quality is very high and uh, with that uh, you can use that with the uh, given confidence so uh, and another advantage is that we have with open source is this uh, uh, open source software is built around the open standards so if we take api management solutions there are different open standards available so uh, open api uh, open api definition um, uh, and the open api tools available freely saga tools available freely uh, so th these are uh, there are some kind of open standards uh, around uh, each and every industry so, so usually, uh, when open source software is developed, these people use uh, this open standard. So, for example, if uh, open source API management solutions, if there are open source API management solutions, most of the time, uh, they are they keep supporting open API definition. They keep supporting Sager. So, likewise, uh, open standards are support. So then, uh, when when these standards remain same, uh, when you need to pull out this data and move that to the different system, that would be much more easy. And also, if you take example, uh, then uh, you develop your API using the Open API. You need to bring it to uh, some kind of API management solution. Most of the Open API management solutions support this Open API. Then you can easily import them and uh, use them uh, within your solution. So. Uh, other advantage is the enhanced security. I discussed about uh, this a uh, bit before. So most of the time, open source software uh, comes with the extra precautions for the security. And also, uh, there are some uh, uh, security scans happen every day. So uh, with our experience, we can say, uh, uh, so at WSO2, we have open source software uh, for the API management. So there are different parties and uh, different uh, security teams. Uh, they run their tools against uh, our uh, API management solution. And they gave us different kind of reports. And uh, they, they find vulnerabilities for us. Sometimes they will come with the fixes and things like that. So with all these, uh, uh, we always feel uh, we are on much more secure condition because uh, Every time uh, when someone needs to evaluate their tools and uh, when they find new vulnerabilities, they help us uh, run in their tools against our software and uh, they report the vulnerability. So with this, we can detect issues and bugs very early, unlike uh, proprietary and closed source software. Because uh, if it's a proprietary and closed source software, you will have limited resource. You cannot always keep scanning and uh, you cannot allocate people. Uh, and there are different challenges like that. But if it's open source software, community will do uh, that part for you. And also transparency is very important. So uh, if your organization use uh, API, some of the API management solution for your, uh, to build your uh, uh, big solution, I mean, uh, your solution, you use some kind of API management tool. So in such cases, transparency is very important because uh, with the, Open source software, uh, you can go to their uh, timeline and see what they do within next year, next two years. What are the new features they are going to add? So likewise, you can know beforehand 
uh, what is going to happen with this particular uh, product and also what you can see what's really happened inside this product so for example if we take some uh, regulations like gdpr which recommends you to do uh, comply with the certain things you should not log usernames like this uh, you should always use the uh, anonymous use id so likewise there are different uh, rules and regulation so but only if you have access to the uh, software source you can 100% certain about uh, these features and uh, are they implemented correctly so uh, when you have open source software anyone can go and see whether uh, these softwares comply with uh, this specific regulation so transparency is very important fact uh, so with this uh, you can see a uh, project timeline you can understand what really happened with the project and also uh, when there are different protocols and compliance requirement uh, you can check the code and verify it's really there because uh, if there are some uh, vulnerabilities and issues like that uh, since anyone can feel use this thing and anyone can inspect the code they will you should report it so if you go to uh, stack overflow in your the discussion forum if they find the vulnerability they will directly say it there so with that uh, you will have a better understanding better transparency about software and software development process and uh, compliance protocols and everything you will have better transparency and also uh most of the time these open source soft, uh, softwares developed uh, uh, by the in a generic way so if we take api management solution then most of the time uh, uh, almost all the people cannot use the same api management solution so for example uh, when you have api management solution some of uh, some of the users need to uh, secure their apis with the oauth2 so while some people need to uh, secure their apis with uh, basic code so sometimes uh, some of the api management requirements are they are to you know send a specific credential to uh, back end so when they need to communicate from api management solution to back end they need to send a pass specific secure headers so likewise there are different requirements so when we implement open source api management solution Uh, we have to uh, be careful i mean uh, we have to develop all these component in extensible manner so if we take uh, so let me take one example so in the ws2 api manager sometimes back uh, we had capability to uh, pass uh, token information to back end as a jwt token so then after some time uh, there were different users uh, uh, logged uh, 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 jira is used uh, in our open source project and uh, asking okay i need jwt in this particular format how can we do that so likewise so then uh, the uh, api management community api management team community uh, decided to support uh, extension points for the customized jwt uh, customized jwt so likewise uh, when there are different requirements come from the different parts of the world so we have to have uh, Uh, great extensibility and uh, we need to be customize everything so if we take uh, most of the open source software uis uh, they need to be customized so same goes with the uh, api management uh, solutions as say and uh, one other important thing is uh, most of the time open source software uh, attracts passionate developers so if we take api management uh, then uh, we can see these days all, almost all the organizations they have uh, api specialist and uh, some uh, integration specialist so basically uh, these uh, integration and api specialist they are uh, aware about what's happened on the industry so they know about the open api and other stuff so so most of the engineers uh, these days they like to build skills related to generic technology so they do not willing to you know learn another proprietary mediation language or another proprietary mediation solution so which, which they cannot use when they go outside that company so with that open source uh, api management solutions attract more people because uh, so because uh, when you have open source solutions then only you can uh, uh, build a complete uh, different community and uh, by you will get different partners come into you uh, they will help and likewise uh, the complete ecosystem build around uh, this kind of open source softwares 
and obviously uh, cost effectiveness uh, cost effectiveness is a very important thing so if we take api management solution then uh, most of the time uh, uh, when someone uh, uh, when some startup uh, trying to use api management solution at the very early stage they may not have budget so in such cases they can easily uh, take the free and open source software and uh, uh, integrate that with their system to initial poc and try out these things so uh, so with no cost they can start and uh, as the company grows and uh, as they get the revenue they can move for the uh, paid subscription so in till like that and also if need they can hire uh, skilled people and also uh, if your business grows uh, along with the business growth api number of api calls grow fast then uh, if you go for uh, like uh, usage based uh, pricing model then sometimes uh, it will not work for you you will have to pay much more than uh, what you expected so in such cases it's very easy to build the uh, expertise locally uh, so that is what uh, most of the leading companies are also doing so they they what they do is they build uh, they use the open source software uh, in house and also they build the in house expertise to use these softwares so it's same for the uh, api management as well so we we can see this uh, trend in the api management domain as well so there are different companies who have different section to manage apis so in this in those sections they have build expertise on open source software so they don't have to go to someone else and get the support uh, they don't have to pay someone else so it's they manage uh, entire deployment uh, to architecture to implementation to everything uh, within the organization itself so uh, and uh, another advantage is most of the time extensions documents community support freely available so if you are using open source software open source api management solution in your organization and you you face with some some challenge and uh, if you want to customize ui and uh, if you want to know how to change the protocol and things like that you can easily go for the community and uh, ask that and get their help so uh, with the community we have unlimited power and uh, you will uh, get answer within very short period of time and along with uh, all these advantages uh, as uh, uh, people who are using api management solutions or open source uh, solutions uh, we have a responsibility so uh, we have to give something back to community so most of the, the big corporations and big vendors are doing this thing so they encourage their users to you know contribute more and more to open source projects and also we need to teach our next generation to uh, you know how to use open source software and how you can start with uh, already developed components and how to not to reinvent the wheel so basically uh, if you every time when you write code uh, there will be always some some part of the logic that you need uh, written and freely available somewhere else in the world so if you use that particular component and start from that point or not that would be much more effective and also with that uh, we can focus much more on the innovation part not doing the repeating work so with that uh, our uh, development power uh, our engineering skills we can utilize very well so with that uh, technology betterment uh, of the community uh, we can uh, achieve very easily so uh, let me finally come to our experience so uh, i i'm working for wso2 so wso2 is uh, world number one uh, open source uh, integration vendor and also we are six large patch committer uh, seven uh, seven large open source vendor so uh, our way to uh, Uh, do the digital transformation is through uh, everything through the open source so so we, what we believe is the closed source uh, for open core or ipas are not capable to handle today uh, digital transformation challenge so you have to go for the full open source uh, software so uh, so to do that we need to have the industry collaboration and uh, uh, we need to work with the different protocols we need to uh, uh, work with the different uh, transformation protocols and all this stuff uh, we need to work on 
so uh, wso2 is providing uh, leadership in the open source uh, api management and integration domain so we had uh, 1 million open source contributions so if you list uh, apache contributors then uh, we are sixth and um, we listed that as the sixth ninth largest uh, github contribution so as of now we have about uh, 100 projects and uh, we have 300 plus uh, active contributors uh, that means only active contributors contributors but uh, much more people are contributing to our software So in 2018, uh, Forest uh, API wave. So they did the complete analysis on all the uh, API management solutions available to the world, and uh, they were listed as an uh, as a only fully open source solution in our analysis. WSO2 provides good breadth across uh, all evaluation criteria. So that's what they told about us. so uh, as the leading api management solution in the world uh, we are keep continue our work uh, like we did before and uh, we are always happy to help with you uh, uh, your implementing your api management solution for your organization so with this uh, i think i can uh, conclude my talk uh, so if you have any questions uh, please let me know and also uh, if you have any other questions related to open source software or how you can uh, use this thing what kind of obligations you have uh, so if you have any uh, component development uh, requirement uh, how do you want to uh, if you need to contribute back to uh, open source api management solution then uh, we are happy to uh, talk with you please contact uh, one of uh, wso to member uh, available in the booth so we are happy to Uh, instruct you uh thank you very much and uh, i'm ready for the questions cool thanks very much um uh are there any questions yeah i appreciate those that stuck around i know it was, it's been a long day and um yeah so that's that's about it um anything from you guys no okay so we